Hey guys, this is Connor O'Flynn with Dive Talk Waterloo, and today's video is about three reasons that you should probably avoid the grind at all costs. Uh, if you're not familiar with the concept of grinding or embracing the grind or you know, rising and grinding or whatever, however you want to apply it, um, it's the idea that hard work above all else um, combined with more and more and more hard work is the thing that's going to get you to your, your goals, allow you to attain your goals and, and uh, attain or reach your dreams, that kind of thing. Um, it's a really popular idea with clothing companies that put all over shirts and uh, sports gear and all that stuff and with professional athletes who have already reached the peak in their careers. Um, who else? So this is a really popular thing in motivational videos right now. Um, but I think it's a really flawed concept, and I think it's really dangerous for a lot of people. And uh, the first reason I think that's such a big it's such a big issue for your average person with uh, with average to above average goals is that it's probably going to hurt you before you reach those goals. Um, most of the time, the context I work with is is fitness or weight loss or strength gain or athletic performance, something like that. So. If we apply it to that, uh, that means if I want to squat twice my body weight, nothing can stop me as long as I work hard enough. And if I'm not reaching my goal, it's just because I'm not working hard enough. Uh, immediately, that is going to cause an issue with a goal like that because the next time I go to the gym to have a squat session, I'm going to work myself into the ground. I'm going to grind myself into the ground. And when I do that, my technique is going to disappear really fast about as fast as my fatigue accumulates. And then what I'm doing is I'm training awful technique. And then I can only take that so far until I actually hurt myself. And if you're hurt and you have a physical goal and you hurt yourself trying to reach for that physical goal, obviously you can't reach for that physical goal anymore. So number one, I think the biggest issue there is that you're probably not going to reach your goal because you're going to be in agony before you get to it. And you'll see this all the time at the gym. If you analyze the people that are dragging themselves through sets of deadlifts or squats or something with agony on their face um, and terrible technique, you can be pretty sure where they're going to be in five years. And that's unfortunate to say, but that's just the reality. The second reason I see an issue with this, uh, with this approach, with embracing the grind, um, is that you're probably not going to reach your goal and you're probably going to start believing that you can't reach your goal. You see this all the time with nutrition. Uh, people follow a really misguided, often stupid approach that's a fat approach maybe, or they heard it from, from a friend or something like that. The problem is with the approach. Um, but if the approach says this is the best approach, and if you're not getting your results, then you're just not working hard enough, you're not dieting hard enough, you're not doing this well enough. If that's the only answer that you have and you don't get to the results that you want, you don't get to the goals that you want, you're left with the conclusion that there's something about you that doesn't allow you to attain those goals. When in fact, it was a stupid approach and no amount of hard work was going to outwork how stupid the approach was. And you can apply that to nutrition, you can apply that to what you do in the gym. A lot of people have no business squatting twice their body weight because the approach they use to try to get to that is, is there's, not, there's no reason to it, there's no science to it, they're not even tracking what they're doing. Um, so clearly it's the approach's fault, it's not the amount of effort you're putting in. The third big issue that I see uh, with embracing the grind is it teaches you some bad habits. Uh, cognitive effort above all else does not make you good at something, especially if you have athletic goals. Um, if you really want to be a better shooter in basketball, so you decide I'm going to put up a thousand shots a day, and by the time you get to 200 shots each day, your arms are rubber from holding your arms up and just shooting constantly, uh, what do you think is going to happen to your technique? You're going to be, you're going to have bad technique under fatigue conditions, and that's what you're going to train over and over and over. Um, so your bad technique is obviously going to lead you to be less accurate or less powerful or less ex less explosive whatever it might be, you are looking for bad technique and then you're reinforcing bad technique. If you remove the idea of the grind and you just say, I'm going to work on my shot as much as I can um, 
until my technique breaks down or when I'm fatigued, I'm going to slow things down a little bit so that I can maintain technique. Then your technique it can be constant. Your technique can even get better. And you can still get the volume in that will allow you to become a better shooter. Um, but if you're only thinking about grinding, well, a thousand shots must be better than a hundred shots. Of course, right? No. If eight, eight or nine hundred of them are awful shots, absolutely not. So again, it's going to take you away from your goal and it's going to make you an ugly shooter. So embracing the grind is a simple concept that sounds great. It sounds, it looks great on paper. It works well in motivational videos but there's just very little application for it with average people and just listening to people that have already reached their goals, already professional athletes or something that are saying it now, that doesn't make it true. So question whether or not it's the right approach for you.